Hello everyone, I'm Don Dare. As the lay leader of Fountain City United Methodist Church back in February, Tom Ballard asked if I would present the message on the Sunday after Easter. I said, sure. Remember way back in February and early March? It seems so long ago. How the world has turned upside down since then. As a congregation, we haven't been together in the sanctuary in weeks. Our kids didn't get a chance to wave the palm branches or hunt for Easter eggs on Palm Sunday. And then last week, we didn't get a chance to sing together, Christ the Lord is risen today, or to sing the Hallelujah Chorus. Many people today are, are filled with uncertainty. We have doubts about the future and we are all concerned. Which meets, leads me to, to our gospel lesson today. Our gospel is taken from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. The time frame is Easter and the Sunday after Easter. We also read about Thomas and his doubts, how they were raised, then dissolved and faded away, all in the presence of Jesus. Let me set this up. It is Easter day. Just before Jesus appeared before the disciples, he appeared to Mary Magdalene in the garden. And Jesus told her to go tell his brothers that I am returning to my father. She did. Mary Magdalene quickly went to the disciples saying, I have seen the Lord. Now, that's where we pick up on verse 19. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked, Jesus came and, and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. He showed them his hands and sighed, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Now, Thomas was not with the disciples when Jesus came, so the other disciples told him that they had seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Well, a week later, the disciples were in the house again. And this time, Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and greeted them, Peace be with you. Then he turned directly to Thomas and said, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out and put your hand into my side. Then Jesus said, Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said, My Lord and my God. Now, here is the central part of this lesson. Jesus then said to Thomas, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. You see, some people think they would believe in Jesus if they could see a definite sign or a miracle. But Jesus says we are blessed if we can believe without seeing. How has your faith changed in the last few weeks? We've all had a lot of time together as families, haven't we? There have been fewer distractions which help us focus on what is important. This first Sunday after Easter is an important time to remember what is essential in our lives. Let me leave you with a story about a doctor and a little boy. A heart surgeon was speaking to an eight-year-old and his family. The surgeon was preparing to do some surgery on the little boy. The doctor said in a matter-of-fact tone, tomorrow morning I will open up your heart. The little boy said, you will find Jesus there. The surgeon continued, I'll open up your heart and check the damage. The boy repeated, you'll find Jesus there. The doctor went on, when I see the damage, I will sew you back up and then we'll talk about the next step. The boy looked at the doctor and said, you will find Jesus in my heart because my Sunday school teacher told me so. He says, it says so in the Bible. Besides that, our Sunday school songs say he lives there in your heart. The surgery took place the next day. After the operation, the surgeon began to, to make notes on what he had found. In his mind, there was no hope and no cure. The little boy would, would die in a matter of months. Then a thought began to get to the doctor. And all of a sudden, the doctor turned to God and he said, why do you do this to this little boy? 
Why can't he live a normal life? Then God spoke to the surgeon's heart and said, The boy is part of my flock and will always be a part of my flock. When he is with me, there will be no more suffering, no more pain. He will have comfort and peace. One day his parents, as well as you, will join him and my flock will continue to grow. The next day, the surgeon went to the boy's room and, and sat down with the parents beside the bed. In a moment or two, the boy opened his eyes and asked very quietly, What did you find in my heart? Hmm. Well, with tears flowing down his cheek, the surgeon said, I found Jesus there. I found Jesus there. What would the surgeon find if he opened your heart? Would he find a, a, a giving heart, providing service to others, evidence of caring for others and, and doing for others joyfully? Would he find Jesus there? I pray that he would. Pray with me. Lord, open up our hearts to Jesus. Let him guide us day to day. And let others see that we have him right here in our hearts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Have a good week and thank you.